you filthy, I'm... disgusting pervert. That's what I'm going to say about that. That is weird and sick. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern day life from our brand new spanking great studio, answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to everyday dilemmas. Like, should I recite poetry on a first date? Not in Burnley. And how do I tell a colleague that their tuna salad lunches make me want to hurl? Hurl? Uh, throw up. Get you with the lingo. Well, don't and sound so surprised. What should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss, but... We're not usual agony ants, are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North, radio presenter. I'm more Chanel number five. You're more Channel, Channel five. five. And that's from Benjamin Gott. Um, Thank hey, you. Hey, I love a good Channel Five yes. documentary. Yes, there was a very good Keeping Up Appearances documentary on recently. You were on it, weren't you? Yes. Um, they, do, they did a really good Ant and Deck one, a really good Adele one. They're all unofficial, like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you think they'll do one with you, for you? Probably not, no. No? No. And don't get me started on bargain loving Brits in the sun and all that. Oh, why? You'd why do- love that. Has Jonathan started watching it? Probably, yeah. yes. <laughs> I have to. Oh, God. I, I can't do an impression. <coughs> I can't do my Jonathan impression today. Too <laughs> full of cold. Oh, dear. Bless you. Um, Shall we have a drink? Yes. We've got new gin. Oh, wow. This is Henley gin. Oh, Henley. Lovely y- part of the world. Yes. Very nice. Have you ever been to Henley? Uh, yes, in fact, I'm going to a wedding in Henley in the in the summer. I, uh, yes, my cousins. Oh, who, you have a cousin in Henley? Uh, I have a cousin. Well, no, the um, my cousins. Thank you. My cousins' fiance's family live near there. Do you want to spill any more? Do we have a cloth, please? I'll use my tissue. Oh, no, but please use, say it's a new tissue. I'll use a new okay, fine. Say tissue. Tissue. Oh, that's so sweet. Don't patronise me. That's my job. It's tissue. Bless you. Um, Thank you. Um, well, I would like to toast everyone who joined us on our live stream yesterday for our fifth birthday. Yes. Oh. If you joined us on TikTok or YouTube, thank you. We won't talk about that today because... Because it hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be... Oh, sorry. I I'm... was going to be... But we won't talk about that today because we're going to put it out as an episode next week. Yes. But yeah, thanks to everyone that joined us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us and to everyone that joined us. Mm. Thank you to Henley Gin for... Ooh, that's got a kick. Thank you to Henley Gin for sending out some gin. Yes, from Henley. Lovely part of the world. Yes, indeed. I'm told. Have you gone punting? I beg your pardon? Punting. What's punting? Uh, you know, the on the... Oh, no, do you do that in Henley or is that elsewhere? I think you can punt in Henley. I think that's um, Venice, isn't it? Well, it is Venice, but also um, Cambridge. That's the one I was thinking of. Can Which, I just say again? Yes. And I'm not going to mention it again much. I'm going to get it out of the way. Second week now. Come here. Look forward to the brownies all week. I've been good all week. I could have had a Kinder Buena last night, and I thought, mm. no. I could have a Kinder Buena with my brew, but I thought, no, I'll wait for my brownie tomorrow. It's sold out again. So stand by, everybody. You mean it was livid. Like, oh, look, you're tucking your tissue up your sleeve like a grandmother. <laughs> Little nana. <laughs> As always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexandmyboss.com, or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sexandmyboss, or you can write to William, who promises a handwritten reply on his own letterhead of paper. The address for that is on the website sexandmyboss.com. Shall we talk about your top? What? And I mean, <laughs> what? Jordan is wearing. I was just thinking of jokes. Uh, Jordan is wearing a grey, what would be called sweatshirt, um, and it's got in yellow writing with a blue outline, Michigan, and then it says the University of Michigan, eighteen seventeen. That's just after six o'clock in the evening. That one's for Luke. Don't worry. Uh, and. You didn't go anywhere, you've never gone anywhere near Michigan, yet alone the University it's, of. It's from Champion, which is a great make, who also... Um, oh, are you being sponsored? Who also invented the hoodie, by the way. Champion invented Champion the hoodie? Champion invented the hoodie. There you go. That's a little fun fact for you. Oh, okay. And I'm just trying to venture out and maybe dress a bit cooler. <gasps> well, let me know when you start. Because... You know what, mate? I'm usually a half-sip shacket kind of guy. 
You are not a half zip person. And I am a half zip person. You have started wearing half zips. And I just think I need to start dressing a bit more Radio 1. Is this pathetic? I don't think Radio 1 is University of Michigan, though. No, it's cool. It's a co- ben, you'd wear this, wouldn't you? See, Ben's a cool guy. Yeah, but he, he's more Radio 6 music. But yeah, what's wrong with it? It's cool. No, it, it's fine. I just, I think it's false advertising. Why? Like, I have one that says Georgetown. But, which is the University of Washington, D.C., because I'm a visiting lecturer at Georgetown in Doha. Oh, God. So that's fine. Right, fine. I'll get a Sunderland Uni one then. Yes, that would be fine. Still got the Spark FM one. Sp- well, exactly. That's what you should be wearing. You have not yet... You haven't even been to Michigan. So? I'm going to Chicago soon. Well, that's Lake Michigan. It's in Illinois. I know what I'm going to wear for that. Are you? What yeah. are you going to wear? I'm Fish gonna nets. I'm going to move my knees up with my stockings <laughs> down. <laughs> and all that jazz. That's what I'm going to do. Julian Clary in his show did a, did a parody of that song at the end, which was called All That Jizz. <laughs> <laughs> did he really? Yeah. Do you remember when we went to see him? It was fantastic. He did it then. Did he? Yes, oh. it was then. Yeah, we did go and see That was that day, uh, we've talked about this years ago on the podcast, where I phoned you and went and said, no, actually, it, you know Julian Clary tomorrow night? You've done that a few times. It's tonight. Yeah. I got the date wrong. And I felt bad for my housemate, Joe. Yes. Who's no longer with us. Yes, yeah, Skylight News, Joe. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't live with him anymore. Mm. And, um, <laughs> and, um, Is he still alive? Because I, I said, yeah, we'll just have a, we'll have a lad's night in beer and pizza. He didn't drink and he didn't like pizza, but anyway. And you're um, not a lad, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, it was... Yeah, fair one. <laughs> um, also, if Ben's laugh sound in the distance mm. today, it's because we don't want him near us. Uh, no, we, we, we're in a brand new studio. Well, we've, it's the same room. We've had the studio done up, haven't we? We've had a fresh lick. Yes, we have. And it, it looks pretty cool. So do check it out on social media. You're probably not bothered. Um, <laughs> or on YouTube and uh you can see our new studio. But yes, yeah, or you great. would have seen it on the live stream yesterday. I want that wood panelling. That's very... Well, that, it's, it's stuck to the wall, so you can't take that home. All we need now is just a big live, laugh, love sign there. <laughs> oh, did, I ever, did I ever go through all my mum's when I was in Spain recently? That did, reminds me. Did she ha- does she have live, laugh, love? She got them all. I took a picture of them. As long as she doesn't have de fruta de lamentia or oh. whatever you've got on your ankle. This de fruta de lamentia. What, what's on your ankle? Oh, you're from me now. What is it? This fr- get you, Disfruto get... el momento. Live, laugh. No, which is... Right. Which is like, l- laughter is amazing or something. So, make a house a home. Hope, love, faith. Right. Uh, Mum, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and loved more than you know. She's just got all these little signs popped around her house. Okay. Our happy place. Uh-oh. That's quite oh, sweet. God. Love, just a sign saying love. Love the life you live. Right. Yeah, all these. It's um, got more signs than the tube. If you sprinkle when you tinkle, please be oh. as sweet and wipe the seat. I hate that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, some more, yeah. Sometimes spending time with your friends is all you need. Um, a dog wags its tail with its heart. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Happiness is time spent with friends. These are all signs around the house. Kitchen rules. If you take it out, put it away. If you use it, wash it. If you turn it on, turn it off. If you <laughs> spill it, wipe it. If you make a mess, tidy up. Birthdays, and that's everybody's birthdays on them. Hang on, show me that one. How does that work? Oh, I see. So hang on. So it's, and then, okay, so underneath it's got the, the 12 months. They're all wrong. They're all wrong. Oh. She's, yeah, anyway. Well, how lovely. Well, it's nice to check her at your home with something. Um, Meanwhile, my parents... Uh, in the ongoing renovation of this house, which is, I keep calling the Sagada Familia. It's a hilarious middle-class joke um, because it's taking so long. Stop pretending you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, oh, I don't know. What are you on a bet? You've just been to South Africa tasting wine for a week. <laughs> don't tell me you're not middle-class. <laughs> anyway, they, uh, they've put a new front door in and the new front door has to change because my mother thinks it's common. Is it plastic? No, 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 it's it's wood. No, please. No, it's wood, but she just thinks that how the little sort of glass at the top still looks common, so they're having a completely new door. Has she had her back doors done? They're glass. (coughs) Okay. Crittle, if you want to know, if you're into your doors. Brittle? 
Crittle. Anyway, so they're, they're having the house renovated. Yes, with... with they should be filming that. Door number three. Picture. They should be filming that, yes. Just, I can just imagine her there sitting on a, a, a chair that's covered in, that's still in the plastic. Mm-hmm. She's got a little makeshift coffee table out of an MDF box. Yes. With champagne on it. Yeah, you're not far off. Yeah. What have I told you, builders, to take your shoes off when you're in my house, darlings? I've just had the carpet done. Brian! Come and speak to this man. He, he has a Bristolian accent that I can't understand him, darlings. It, Mike is actually doing the renovation for them. Is he? Yeah, oh. overseeing it as oh, a builder. Oh, of course yeah. he is, yeah. Sarah, where do you want this, uh, this new settee? It's a sofa, Mike. Here. We have told you this before, darling. <laughs> we don't call it settee in this house. <laughs> All right, bloody hell. Sorry I spoke. <laughs> finished yeah anything else going on in your world well oh i'm sure there's lots going on in my world but let's let's talk about the giggler in the corner who i'm sure gene divas will have noticed the giggler in the corner on uh, on social media during his time away in south africa posted what i believe in vernacular is called a thirst trap in case you didn't see this was describe it a picture that producer ben's Girlfriend took. Yes, Kat. and then Ben reshared it on his own. Cat was in bed and... I assume was in bed. Yeah, Cat was in bed. Oh, it was on a sofa? She was in a bath. Oh, she was Kat, in a bath? Cat was in the bath oh. and um, Ben was in having a shower, which was outside. It was yes. an outside shower. Yeah. And Ben was... Naked. Bo- bollico. And it was only the positioning of a beam in the door... That covered it up. ...that went down the middle. And Ben's little face sort of was poking around the beam. Thankfully, yeah. nothing else poked around and the beam. we believe a lot of g and have been, uh, been messaging about this first trap. Yes. Yeah. It's lucky he's hung like a hamster. <laughs> Not that you could see in the face. Not that you could see, but yeah. I want to know... What is the etiquette of posting a thirst trap when you are already in a relationship? Didn't he do one in a paddling pool a couple of years ago? Yes, as well? during lockdown when he still lived in Manchester. I remember it Did well. Did you live in Manchester in lockdown? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. No, I know. Um, I. Were you not with were you? you yeah, he was with Living together then? No. Um, but yes, why? What, oh yeah. Why? No. I mean, it's fine for Kat to take that photograph. Whatever she needs, it's fine. She shared it. Did you? Uh, did she ask you? Uh, no, she won't ask him. No, probably not. How dare you question what I oh, share? They're all out today. How dare you? I share what I like, and I like what I share. She's not a sign on your mind. Do, do you think you would have shared that photo to your story had you not stripped naked and gyrated against me on tour last year? Because I think what, now that you've sort of, you've owned your sort of, you've owned your, your body... You're like Lizzo. You've owned your body. <laughs> it's your body. It's your choice. I like Lizzo. And, you know, Gene Divas that came to our tour saw you, saw you strip. Oh, we're off again. Sorry, carry on. And you're, now, you're you, on ben, do you feel... and Ben's podcast, I'll just say. That's our backup plan. Crack on. Um... Do you, you know, do you feel more empowered? Yes. Yes. There we go. You see, I was right. Great. How's your week been, by the way? Yeah, good. Um, All right, should we go on to the listeners' problems? I, at the time of recording, I'm going to watch Self Esteem tonight. Self Esteem. Lean back, be strong, never, been, you'd never think you'd let this long. And what's Self Esteem? She's. Um, or she? Yeah, she's brilliant. She's a singer that I'm really into. Why is she not called, you know, like Julie? Well, her name's Rebecca, but Self Esteem's better, isn't it? Well, which I think Rebecca's fine. It's like my real name. Imagine going to the bank. Hello, self-esteem. Yeah, that's not a real name. Well, By the no. way, Jordan North is my real name, I'm joking. Yeah, not a stage name. Not a stage name. And then next week... Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Rick's coming down. Okay. Best friend, Rick. Yes. Um, we're going to watch the Cortinas in London. The Cortinas? Yeah. Now, me and Rick... Is that a type of car? No, they're a band. Right, right. don't get me started, but... Up north, yeah. everyone loves the Cortinas. Yes. And um, down south, they're still big, but they're not as big. Up north, everyone loves them. So they're doing and like a small intimate gig? No, no, no. They're selling out, um, I think it's at the Apollo. I can't remember. Anyway, it's a big venue. And they don't get much radio play. Not 19 Forever used to get loads of play, but th- their albums, I love. I think they're great. Um, so Rick got me into them when I was about 17, 18. I used to do an indie night in Preston called Not 19 Forever, which is one of their songs. <laughs> So we used to go to roll. Ro- you could call it not twenty-five forever now. Mm, not, not thirty-three forever. So we used to go. I used to 
we just go to Royal Parole on a Friday. We'd always. I'm not. You, you're, yeah, but it's I've, interesting. Jordan's talking about the North now, and your voice, your diction is getting sloppier. No, it's not. Because you're you're going, you're going, you're thinking about the North. So every Friday in Preston, we just go Royal Parole. Royal right? Parole. Yeah, and we, I'd wear the same green Fred Perry polo shirt. That with, with the top a, button done up. Yeah, the yeah. top button done up. Nice. And I spent a fortune on I'd wear that, some black skinny jeans and some Converse. I wore it every Friday. I used to go and they always played Cortinas. And was this when your hair was all over your face? Yeah. Yeah. And then a few years later, I put on my own indie night called Not 19 Forever. Mm. There was a bit of hit and miss, I'm not going to lie, but yeah. We're going to oh, really? Some Cortinas. And um, I might be meeting Liam afterwards. Who's Liam? Huh? Is that another friend? No, he's the lead singer. <laughs> oh, right. Liam Frey. Liam Frey. So, um, I, 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 DM, Liam Frey. I DM'd him and he DM'd me back. So, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you they slid say, into each other's DMs. They, they say never meet your idols, because do you remember Alex Turner was in work the other week? Well, it was about two months ago, actually. Right, and he is from... Jesus Christ, it's like doing a podcast with me pissing <laughs> Nan sometimes. Excuse me, says the person who's tapped the tissue up their sleeve. Alex Turner <laughs> is from... Arctic Monkeys. Oh, right. And he was in the studio across from me at work being interviewed by Jack Saunders. Mm -hmm. So I was, so Vic was like, go and say hi. And I was like, yeah, no, no, I can't, I can't. Drink. Go and say hi. So I plucked up the courage. I went out and he just walked past me and went to the lift. So oh. I never got a chance to meet him. But I was too nervous to say anything. So yeah. Oh, bless you. Also, I can make Yorkshire puddings now. You can make Yorkshire puddings? I, Jordan Levi North, am officially. A proper northerner. I think I've think I've nailed it. I've just got one. So I did them last week. Mm. Spot on. I've just got yeah. to do them again because apparently you can. All, you only know you can do it if you can do them twice. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it might could be a, a fluke. fluke. Could be yeah. a fluke. Yeah. And how did you? What did you do differently this time? Um, I only put half the amount of batter in the hole. <laughs> think. Right. <laughs> I can't believe people are still listening to this. <laughs> I actually can't. <laughs> okay. If, if this is the did, best what, we can what, come what, up with. What oil or fat did you use? Um, I just I used some flour oil. Okay. I didn't use your goose dripping or whatever. Beef dripping. Beef dripping. I promise you they'll taste better with beef dripping. Yeah, but calories. Sorry to the vegans. Or vegetarians. Mm. Beef dripping. Yeah. And then I had some batter left over the next day and I had told it all. <laughs> Good. That's nice. Yeah. I think we're actually doing that tonight, actually. Oh, are you? Yes. Yeah, we are, George. Yeah, we're having toured in all. It's my favourite position. <laughs> Shut up. Before we go on to um, uh, your jolly joke of the week, Is we it... need to bring a significant potato peeler update and a little announcement off the back of this. So a significant Wendy potato peeler update. G&D, as we have loved all of your attempts, uh, most of them successful, to get the potato peeler read out on various radio stations. We do think now that we may have slightly crossed the line and... We're not crossed the line. I just feel it maybe is time to bring things to yeah. a close. Yeah, and we're also, real talk, pissing a lot of people off within the industry, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel, aside from the coronation... You guys are amazing. You really are. ...that we've peaked with this one on Radio 2. Now, I've previously said on this podcast that we knew that... Various people have been trying to get Scott Mills, your former colleague on Radio 1. And probably the best broadcaster on the airways at the moment. Yeah, to do the potato peeler. And because his producer, Ben, his producer, Ben, not our producer, Ben, his producer, Ben, uh, is a and eva they were being stopped and filtered out of Scott's tech system. However, Scott's producer, Ben, took his eye off the ball, and this is what happened. We wouldn't normally do these, but we are public service, uh, but let's not make a habit of it. We've got Robbie in Glasgow says, music sounding amazing as always on Radio 2 this afternoon. Can you please ask Wendy next door if I can borrow her potato peeler? She's not replying to my text, but I know she always listens. Wendy, text Robbie back. Amazing. Amazing. But I, I agree now. Let's... Uh... Well, and then off the back of this... Uh, obviously, they, he plays some song there. I believe that was Jax Jones and Whistle. Uh, off the back of that... Are they playing that on Radio 2? Fair play. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Radio 2. Like, radio, you're gonna, I don't know what you're going to be playing, because Radio 2 are playing what you used to play. Oh, God, you're such a... Yeah, I'm, anyway. I'm not getting involved in it. I'm not. Anyway, Scott obviously realised what had happened. His producer, Ben, uh, got quite cross that Scott had not clocked this, and this is what happened. Bye, 
and the producer's absolutely fuming right now because he couldn't stop me in time. He's been trying for months to... Um, well, he normally would get there before I did read it out, but he didn't on this occasion. I just uh, read out a message from Robbie there to Wendy about the potato peeler, and it's a thing on the Help I My Boss podcast with Jordan North and William Hansen. So, really sorry, Ben. Literally, people have been sending it for months, and I finally did it. So, Jordan, William... You can have that one. Making my way down to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Bless yeah, him. Thank I'm going to text him. He, we're, we're long overdue a drink. Have you ever yes. had a drink? So Scott's like my broadcasting idol. I'm making right. no secrets. Yeah. And he's a, he's a good friend now. But you've got to go for a drink with him. He's, okay. he's the best. Well, I look forward to, I look forward to it. He, I once went best. for a drink with Ken Bruce. Do you know did this? You? Yes. Oh, did you? Much miss Ken Bruce. Did you actually? Listen to him on Greatest Hits Radio in a couple oh, of weeks. Oh, shut up. No. Scott. Scott. And by the way, Scott sounds great at the moment. Scott's sounding very good, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy he's on over there. Particularly though. when he's not talking about potato peelers. Yeah. When did you go for a pint with Ken Bruce? Pre-COVID. So it was a long time ago. Well, uh, well William, um, would you want a um, Guinness? A, um, <laughs> um, lager? <laughs> Maybe you want to do pop quiz. Pop quiz? You mean pop master? Pop master. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't keep, wor- do keep working on that. Yeah. Have you heard Thingy's impression, Ken Bruce? Did a Rob full, sh- did a full yes, show with him, didn't he? It's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway. Um, right, let's go for your jolly joke of the week, shall we? Okay. Um, oh, you're going to your phone, not to the joke book. I don't know if I've done this one before. Probably. So I was up in Leeds last week, uh, working away. I needed to get some DIY stuff, and uh, I got lost, and I couldn't find the store. So I said to this fella, I pulled up, I said... Excuse me, pal, have you got a B and Q in Leeds? He says no, it's L E E D S. <laughs> a local barber in my neighbourhood was arrested for selling drugs. Unbelievable. I'd been his customer for years and no idea he was a barber. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Good, lovely. Uh, Shall we go on to the listeners' problems? Let's do that. This first one is from Anonymous. Hi. Straight to the point. I have a problem with my father-in-law. He's got a very wandering eye, mainly at my chest. Mm. He hardly makes eye contact with me when we're in the same room, as he is constantly trying to look down my top. The worst example of this behaviour was at our wedding, where I had other guests mentioning that he wasn't paying proper attention. It is loathsome and embarrassing. I have spoken to my husband about it, but he doesn't appear to have mentioned it to him or he's just ignored him. I'm used to the attention to the girls, as they are quite ample, but I'm also a strong northern lass and I'm more than capable of putting people in their place. But is it appropriate to tell my father-in-law to fuck off? I also feel that I shouldn't be put in this position in the first place. In your opinion, do you think I would be out of line if I were to bring it up and tell him that in no uncertain terms, should it happen again, he is likely to get a slap across the face? Uh, yeah, I think I think you should. Well, I think you I think you've tried every other avenue and option. Yes. And um, yeah. I well, think... I don't know if she has though. I wouldn't go. For, she's, I wouldn't... Got, she's told her husband. I think she just needs to say, "Can you?" Yes, it's a shame your husband isn't doing something about it. His father. I wouldn't slap him. I'm not going to condone, condone violence. No, I don't know. If, do you think he knows he's doing it? Yes, probably. Yeah, I'm not sticking. I would just it. go. Excuse me, I, I, my eyes are up here, please. Yeah, it's got to be a comment like that, or just or one little. Can you stop looking at my breasts, please? It's, it's getting rather embarrassing now. Yeah, but I wouldn't. At the end of the day, he is in effect now your family. He's always going to be family if you remain married. So, I would not um, worry about it. He he is in the wrong, not you. So don't feel bad about correcting him. Is my answer on that? Okay. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. That's oh. that's great advice. Oh, whipping through these. I know. This is from Amy. Dear William Jordan and EPB, my question is a simple one. I've recently spent a week with a few colleagues. We stayed in a very nice hotel where every meal was three courses. I was always told as a child when I finished my meal that I should put my knife and fork together. At the end of the courses, I would look around and see that three or more people didn't put their knives and forks together. Instead, they had them at the three and nine o'clock positions. I have never doubted what the correct way is until now. If it was... Only one person doing this, I wouldn't question it. But having seen a few people doing it, I just don't know anymore. So, what is the proper way to put your cutlery down after you finish a meal? Thank you for keeping me entertained. You're sincerely a loyal g and Amy. Well, over to everyone's favourite etiquette expert, Jordan North. 
So if they're at three and nine o'clock, it means you're just having a little rest. Yes. You're talking and you're not Ish. finished, but you're just having a rest. Well, I'd call it three, four, C would be... If, if you imagine the plate as if a If they're together, yeah, that means you're finished. Yes. Doesn't it? This is what in etiquette land is called the silent service code. And uh, this... Trust me, etiquette land is great. Uh, and, it yes. Sounds like some at Dolly Parton or something. Have you been to Dolly Land? Oh, Dollywood. You, Dollywood, you'd no. love that. Yeah, I probably would. Wouldn't you? Yes. That's kind of, or being all etiquette expert, letting your hair down. I can imagine with a big, big, big pink Dolly cowboy hat on. <laughs> You and Mikey. That's just Blackpool. With your boots on, big kick shitters on. What are they called? Shit kickers. <laughs> anyway, Amy, yes, you, you are correct. When your cutlery goes together, and in Britain it would be at a 6.30 position, if you imagine the plate is a clock face. Other countries it's at a slight angle, like sort of 5.25, 4.20. But it doesn't really matter about the angle as long as they go together. That's the key. Together is an indication to the staff that you are finished. You are correct. Don't worry about your colleagues. They are wrong. Keep doing what you have always thought is right. Yeah. I've always been... Is that still the etiquette in Burnley? Yes. Unless yes. you're having, like, McDonald's or chippy tea. Well, you don't get cutlery from McDonald's, do you? No. You no. just eat it with your hands. Nice. Mm. Would Good. you eat a pizza with a knife and fork? fork? Depends on the type of pizza. Domino's, you wouldn't. No. No, definitely not. You know, I said to Mikey a few weeks ago, I said, should we have a Domino's tonight? You know, let's... You know, it's be outrageous. And Piss off, you have one every week. We do not. You bloody... I've not never, a Domino's. I've seen you inhale the Domino's on yes. tour. Yeah. Right. Two Domino's That's in one the point. day. And he said, he went, no, because I'll feel like we're on tour. We only have them on tour. Oh, okay. So he, we have to go on tour. And now we go to Anonymous. Dear William Jordan and EPB, I love listening to your podcast while I was driving for work. And after Thank you. And after hearing the iglooing story, oh, I had to God. email you. I apologise in advance for this. I'm still asked about that at least once a really? week. Yeah. <laughs> By your mother. No. God, no. What are you trying to say? When I was at university, there was a story going around about a group of lads who were sharing a house. One drunken night, they were chatting shit, and one of them set a challenge. He bet that he could hide one of his shits somewhere in the house, and the other housemates wouldn't be able to find it. Gross, I know. Drunkenly, they accepted the challenge. The shitter did his business, and the others started their pooey hunt. The lads are f fucking weird, honestly. They couldn't find it. And I went played to a bed. similar game. I'm not even joking. <laughs> That's disgusting. Uh, not. I'll explain after, but yeah. They couldn't find it and went to bed. Once sober, they realised how disgusting this was and desperately tried to find it, but he wouldn't reveal the hiding place. This went on for a few days and they started to think he was full of shit and hadn't actually done it. About a week later, one of the lads was in the kitchen making toast. And he scrapes his knife through the butter to reveal a brown streak. No, that's just disgusting. What? After this, can we have no more poo stuff, please? Yeah, I think we've reached a limit on poo. The shitter had taken the butter out of the tub, melted it down, pooed in the butter tub. I, this is disgusting. Etc. What is it? So, William, was this the... What is the etiquette for hiding shit in the tub of butter? Sorry. Don't do I, it, you I, filthy, I... disgusting pervert. That's what I'm going to say about that. That is weird and sick. I was just going to jump in and say, I'm no etiquette expert here, but please don't be doing that. That's I'm going to funny. be really hard line going forward. No. I don't That's want to... not funny. You shouldn't do it. Disgusting human being. Yeah, I agree. My mate wants pooed in a takeaway thing and give it my mate as if it was his. And, and also, it's a, really, it's a really good... No more poo stuff. It's a really good case for having a butter dish and not having a butter tub. Out of people's minds. Take your butter also, out of the packet, pop we, it on the dish. I don't know if that's true, because, like, no one in that house had used the butter until a week later. Well, they, I don't know, they might be on a diet. No, you, you use butter every day, don't you? Well, not necessarily. Sometimes I just have a knife of butter. Well, now who's weird? I just think I really need some butter. <laughs> Your answer is the same. Oh, thank you. Well, them and the fags, yeah. <laughs> this one is from Matt. Dear Messrs. Hanson, North and PB. Messrs. Matt's been listening. Yes, well done. Uh, which is plural for? Misters. Messrs. But yes. Uh, firstly, I became an avid fan after... 
Firstly, I became an avid fan of... <laughs> oh, I've gone. Are you pissed again? <laughs> I love when you're pissed because you've got, I've gone. You've only had one. Have you eaten today? There's a bear shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Have you eaten today? <laughs> no, I didn't mean like this is from someone who I love food. Like Ben's not bothered. He'll he he's like a steak. He'll eat once a month and not bothered. But you're on par with me as someone who loves the food. I had two eggs on toast this morning. Okay. Firstly, I became an avid fan after discovering. My God, say discovering. Are you okay? <sighs> Firstly, I became an avid fan after discovering you on TikTok and subsequently, or consequently really, subscribing to your podcast. Thank you. I am working my way through all the episodes to make sure that all references are fully understood. I believe it would be rude not to. Also, I massively suffer from FOMO. Please help. I live in a housing complex in fairly close proximity to my neighbour. My neighbour has complained that he can see me walking about in my house in the nude. I do have my windows and blinds open as I'm a lover of fresh air and natural light. Oh, very European. What, do I like air? No, because I always open window in the morning, apparently it's really European. I said it on TikTok. Europeans, like Germans and that. You open a window and suddenly you're removed for no, a croissant. In, in, in Europe and stuff, because we used to do it when we lived in Germany, you, they, put all, they open all the windows and they put like the... Sheets and bedding on the balcony and stuff, so it's fresh for the day. Honestly, I'm just picturing you, Wendy Graham, <laughs> Ryan, Dominic, and Brad, at the opening of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour, <laughs> bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Here comes the baker. <laughs> it sounded Jamaican. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Yeah, mm. but it's very European. Is I, it? I, first thing I do is I open my windows in the morning. <laughs> Staring the room. Yeah, that's... I don't think that's European. It is. That's just basic hygiene. Oh, you should do it, shouldn't you? You let the fresh air in. Yes. Okay, carry on. I'm also comfortable in my own skin to walk in my own home, sometimes tan on the deck too, with nothing on. I'm a firm believer that I'm in the privacy of my own home and I'm not responsible for what people see. Uh, should they choose to look through my windows or doors. My question is, what is the correct etiquette to politely tell this person to F off? Am I wrong? Should I apologise and close my windows and blinds? Should I wear more clothes? Best wishes from Durban, South Africa. Oh, did you visit? Matt. P.S. We don't get Debonet here. I feel left out. See, it's a very European thing, like I said. Oh, South Africa's in Africa. It's not in Europe. Um, Do we need to do a geography lesson? No, we don't. Um, Matt, I'm going to say this here, be quite controversial, but and many people will will disagree, but I think if you're going to walk around Bollico, you need to close your curtains and your blinds. Or you can get privacy screens. What, a privacy screen? It's like a film you put on the window. You can see out, they can't see Oh, okay, you get privacy screens. Everyone's happy. I, I think if you live... In a complex with loads of neighbours that can see you, I think yep. it's only fair that you don't walk around naked because it can make people feel uncomfortable. And in the UK, you probably end up on a register. So um, that's my opinion. But this is someone that I don't like being naked anyway. I'm, Do you not? Even when I'm straight out of the shower, I'm like boxes on, dressing out. I don't like the thought of being naked. Really? I never walk around the house naked. Do you? No, not really. No, I bet Mikey does. N- not massively. I bet he does. Well, we've all seen what he gets. Yeah, actually. I bet you and Cat walk around Balico all the time. Oh, put it away. You saw it. You yeah. nearly did. But I don't, um, so, but call me old fashioned. And right. I grew up in an house where everyone just walked around Balico naked. Wow. We were getting Pilky told me this recently. Well, he sends you, for, is it him or real? Yeah, Rick he, that sends, sends, yeah. he says, I remember the time I come round to your house, we're all going to races. And he went, I went upstairs, and I think we talked about this before. He went, your dad wouldn't shower, Ryan were brushing his teeth and Bradley were having a shit on the toilet in the same bathroom. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Wow. So everyone in my house did, apart from me and my mum, really. It's like a nudist camp in mm. your house. Well, they were all in the army. They just walk around with their arms and stuff, don't they? Have you ever seen your mum and dad naked? 
No. Well, I'm probably probably age like three. Yeah. But not that I can remember. Mm. Well, there we go. It all goes on. Did you ever play cock or ball with your brother? No, funnily enough. Okay. Neither did I. Really? Can you remember? We were, we ben, were... have we played cock or ball before? Or am I making that up? No, we were going to do it. You wanted to... When we were having one of our tour production meetings... <laughs> that was it. That was it. I, my, one of the ideas for the live show was to have a game of cock or ball live on stage. Yes. Thankfully, that never... <laughs> God. I was really adamant on that one, weren't I? No, the idea was... Did that a... then morph into producer Ben's tripping? No, we, we were going to have a picture on the screen and it was super zoomed in and you had to guess if it was a cock or ball. Yes, Gene Divas... Get in touch, Gene Divas, if you've ever played cock or ball before. I'm sure people have. Just you pull a bit out, you know, if you've got a hole in your jammers. You just go, babe, yeah, cock or ball. That's disgusting. Matt, I hope we've helped. Thank you very much, Gene Divas. We digress. What are you doing after this? Uh, going to go to the gym. Oh, yeah? Yes, because oh. I eat too much. <laughs> I was going to see if you fancy a game of cock or ball. Right now. <laughs> um, always remember, Gene Divas, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Mondays and share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation as well. Any advice that you need to help at sexedmyboss.com. Or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram at sextonmyboss. Or you can write to William Hansen here, who does promise a handwritten reply in his own letter paper, which will be six years from now. The address is on the website. I'm Sext up to date. Sextonmyboss.com. I feel bad now. I just meant because you love, you love your food just as much as me. Yes. And you get quite hungry. Do I? No, I do. Yeah, don't, don't judge me by your standards. Shall we have a quick joke before we go? Oh, yeah, go on. Okay. Oh, that's quite fitting. What's Iron Man without his suit? I don't know. Start naked. Oh, shit. See you on Friday. Mm-hmm.